Hey there star seekers, my name's Luke and welcome back to the channel for another indie game review, this time for a twin stick shooter platformer called Boom Blaster. Now I was originally drawn to this title by its art style as it reminded me a lot of Fury Unleashed, a great roguelike game that I covered last year. The eShop listing for the game also made it sound pretty great, speaking of several characters with their own unique skills and abilities, vast selections of weapons and hundreds of ways to amputate monsters. Well after playing Boom Blaster for a couple of hours, I can safely say that this is another case of what's commonly known as talking bollocks. So let's head into this review and take a look at what the game actually has to offer. Now kicking things off at the main menu we don't get any sort of options menu and we're simply prompted to begin a new game. Upon selecting new game we get a bit of an intro which loosely outlines the plot and so far as I can tell we have been released from prison and drafted into the great confederation to atone for our sins and stop one of the rogue robots. There are also other snippets of storyline as you work through the game in the form of dialogue boxes but I never really bothered with them and they frequently came mid-level amongst the action. Now before we get into the game, we get to select between three different characters, none of which have a proper name. In spite of the eShop description's claims, none of them actually have special abilities and in fact the only thing setting them apart is that one of the three character attributes is slightly better for each character. We have H215 who has an enhanced blaster meaning she's got more energy to start with, H332 who has increased health or H170 who has increased movement speed. I just went with the blue herd H215 to begin with and after I discovered what the special abilities actually meant I didn't bother to play the other two. So upon beginning the game we're dropped into a tutorial level where we see our character and an alt costume M Bison doing a little jig. This tutorial area aims to teach us the basics and right away I found the game's control scheme was pretty awful. As you'd expect this being a twin stick shooter, we move with the left thumbstick and aim with the right which is pretty standard but then our jump button is bound to R while our shoot button is bound to L and this tripped me up a few times as I hit the wrong button and fell down pits. In addition to these two odd button choices, our ZL button lets us crouch which logically you would have thought that are bound to ZR and while running and crouching we can do some freaky looking knee slide like a 10 year old at a disco which is incredibly awkward and fails to work half the time. The ZR button allows you to toss grenades which are found as pickups in levels though these are pretty inconsistent and you're able to kill some enemies in a single hit with them but they have no effect on other enemies and you're also able to wall jump though this is janky as hell when you actually get to use it later in the game. Finally we learn that we can climb hand over hand on vines and other cables though we aren't able to shoot whilst doing this. So once that tutorial is out of the way we get into the real game. There are three chapters in Boom Blaster, each with six levels and the first chapter drops us into some sort of industrial looking area full of different types of robots that have all gone apeshit and taken over the place. Now generally your objective in levels is to simply progress to the end of the zone, along the way you do a spot of platforming, shoot a bunch of enemies and collect various pickups but there are also some levels which require you to rescue workers hidden throughout them and several levels feature boss fights at the end of them. Boss mechanics are sound for the most part though I was able to kill this one boss by shooting it whilst its dialogue box was still up and when it comes to workers if you get to the end of a level and have missed one then you've got to backtrack through the entire level to find him. Now upon starting this first zone I was actually a little stuck at first as I tried to work out how to get up this lift whose spikes kill you instantly when you touch them. I did try to perform wall jumps several times to no avail but then I found out that you can actually perform a double jump, something that the tutorial neglected to mention. This bump in the road was to be the first of many though and as I worked my way through the first chapter the issues mounted up, leading me to believe that there was actually no testing done on the game prior to its release. To start with, each shot that you fire will drain part of your orange energy bar seen in the top left. Once empty you'll be unable to fire which only serves to slow the game down and it's also incredibly annoying when fighting multiple enemies or taking down bosses as you chip away at the massive health bars. 
Now enemies do randomly drop coins when killed which can be used to boost your stats, increasing both your health and energy bar levels and movement speed, but upgrades increase in cost and these coins are lost on death, so more often than not I'd finish a level with only a couple of coins, meaning that I couldn't upgrade anything. For some reason the upgrade menu can only be accessed at the end of levels and I couldn't actually work out any way to access it outside of this, which to me was a bit of an odd design decision. Now the second set of issues are actually with the level designs themselves. Not only are these first levels bathed in darkness with foreground obstacles frequently obscuring your vision, it's also very difficult to distinguish between collidable and non-collidable terrain. One minute you'll be able to stand on something, but then the next you'll just fall straight through an identical section of terrain, and this inconsistency caught me out on a number of different occasions. In addition to this, I frequently had issues with the sliding and wall jumping mechanics, and some levels feature destructible barrels, though there's no discernible difference between barrels which sometimes explode killing you instantly when you shoot them, and other barrels which are totally fine to shoot. Moving on, we finally come to the game's enemies, which contrary to the eShop description's claims, you can't actually amputate in any way at all. Firstly, enemy AI just isn't great. Other than the flying enemies, the rest really don't pose a threat to you, as they don't really have any way to aim at you, and often, like this, they just get stuck. The biggest problem with the enemies is that they all respawn when you die, which is a bit of an issue as the developers didn't take this into account when placing checkpoints in the game. More often than not you'll respawn surrounded by enemies who will instantly pepper you with shots, leaving you with almost no health at all if you haven't been able to afford upgrades for it. There's also very little in the way of enemy variety, with the second and third chapters more or less featuring the same sets of enemies, just with a different sprite to change their appearance. Boss enemies do have a decent amount of variety to them and the developers have been quite creative, though generally they don't offer too much of a challenge, especially when you get a few upgrades. Now, when it comes to the vast selections of weapons mentioned in the eShop description, you can find weapon pickups in levels which do switch out your standard weapon for things like triple shotguns or flamethrowers. You do, however, still have the power drain issue with these, the flamethrower has no range so you end up taking hits whilst trying to kill enemies, and as soon as you die you'll lose the weapon anyway, so most of the time you'll just be using your standard weapon. There are other pickups in stages such as health and grenade pickups and a little drone who follows you around and fires at enemies every so often, but again these are lost on death, and checkpoints are frequent enough that health pickups don't really matter all that much. Now I'm going to come clean at this point and admit that I couldn't actually muster the willpower to finish the first chapter of Boom Blaster. After getting to its final level I'd already grown sick and tired of the game, but I did however check out the other two chapters using a cheat code to unlock them, and after playing through a bit of these I just found more of the same, decided to call it quits and wrote this review. In all I think there was plenty of opportunities for Boom Blaster to be a pretty great run and gun platformer, but sadly its controls are awkward, enemies are repetitive, level design is all over the place, and the general gameplay mechanics just aren't much fun. Visually, I really like the game's art style, and there's a ton of great detail into the environment's enemies and character models. I also thought the sound effects and music were pretty decent, but overall I just thought Boom Blaster felt unfinished and untested, and I can't recommend picking up the game despite the amount of content on offer for its low asking price. For a rating, I'm going to be giving Boom Blaster 2 out of 5 stars. Once again, as is the case with many games, Boom Blaster's eShop description embellishes the facts, making it sound much better than it is, but hopefully this review has provided a more factually accurate representation of what the game has to offer. You can get Boom Blaster from the UK Switch eShop for £4.49, or from the US eShop for $4.99. Alternatively, the game's also available on PlayStation, Xbox and Steam. And that about wraps up this review of Boom Blaster, make sure to hit that like button if it helped you out, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments section below, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to be notified of new reviews I upload every few days. For now though, I just want to thank you all once again for watching, and until next time, take care of yourselves, and game on.